Okay, this is uh, problem 26 from the 50 Diffie Q um, journal post. So um, here we have a standard second order ODE, um, and it's homogeneous. We have uh, no term aside from y, y prime, and y double prime. So we're going to form what's called the characteristic equation. And so we will um, explore that in this video, and then we'll use it for a few of the others, because some of the other um, problems on this same journal prompt require um, this mode of thinking. So what we do is we form, and our variable is typically r, with coefficients of the quadratic that match the coefficients of y double prime for the quadratic, y prime for the linear term, and then our constant is equal to the coefficient in front of the lone y. And we still set this equal to zero. Now we can derive this, and if you haven't already, then you will in class eventually. Um, why this works. But we find the roots of this characteristic equation, and if they're real, we place them in the exponential in front of time. And if they are not real, as we'll see in this case, then we um, find another way to form the solution. So finding the roots of this, um, we have, and we can see by the repeated addition, and that b squared minus 4ac is negative, that this is going to be an imaginary solution. So we take negative 6 plus or minus the square root, and we solve it like we normally would um, a quadratic. 4ac is 52 all over 2a. And so this turns out to be negative 3 plus or minus the square root. What's under here would be negative 16. Um, so we can pull out an i to make that positive 16. Bring this in, we get 4. Or, uh, sorry, 16 inside. Now, um, we can now simplify this, and this is our solution for r in the characteristic equation. Now, since we have an imaginary and a real portion, we can write in a plus bi as our general form. And the solution to any um, characteristic equation with this solution um, that's imaginary is um, a constant times e to the a sine of bt plus c2 e to the minus a cosine bt. So in this form, we just uh, pull those constants right from here. a is negative 3 and b is 4. So our solution in this case, um, y of t equals, and we can call these constants anything. I usually use a and b instead of c1 or c2. So we pull this one, and sorry if I said negative a earlier, that's not the case, just a, because we have a negative 3 here. And so we use a sine of 4t, and that's b, not i, that's not included, just b. And then b and different b are constant, and then cosine 4t. Now we could factor out the e and then leave just the rest uh, in parentheses, but either way is the correctly written way. Um, so you can reference this whenever we need to uh, form a solution of this form. So again, the a goes in the exponential, just like it does if this is real, and then the b um, that leads the i goes in the sine and cosine argument. And again, this this could be derived as to why this forms the correct solution, but for now we'll just um, we'll leave it at this. So in our next few, um, we're also going to look at this same um, characteristic form. So let's uh, look at an initial value problem with this. Now our equation will be real. Might as well change the number. Um, so our uh, equation is going to have um, missing one of these terms. So this is number 27 on your post. And again we have homogeneity here and we have um, only second order. So we can still form this characteristic equation. There's no y prime term, so there's no r to the first power, plus 4. Now we can easily see, um, without necessarily the quadratic equation, that r equals plus or minus 2i. We square r, we get 4 times i squared, which is negative 4, plus 4 is 0. Whether it's positive or negative cancels out when we square it. So that's why we have those two solutions. Now keep in mind this is 0 plus or minus 2i. So a equals 0 from earlier and b equals 2.
So now that we have that, we can write our general form again. We can write a, and now we have e to the a, which is zero. So that's just one. So we can drop that term. And now b goes inside the um, argument just like before. And then we can technically as well say b e to the zero times cosine 2t. Now this shouldn't be a surprise because what we have here is a differential equation in the form y double prime, um, we could say plus omega squared times y equals zero, where omega is the argument that goes inside of our cosine solution. Um, so by taking that form, um, we can also see how that derives from the equation in the past post. But either way, if you're able to recognize it right away, then that's great. Either way, this is an oscillatory um, solution with no exponential because of the um, lack of A right here. Now I switch colors. Um, all right, so, but we have an initial value as well. So we have Y of zero. My notation, the subscript is time zero. And Y prime of zero is equal to one. So now we have to solve this with these initial conditions. So the first one is easy. Um, this is y, hence a good time for a color change. So now if we plug in zero, we should get zero. So let's plug in zero. If I plug it in here, this whole term goes away, sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. So b times one is equal to y at zero, which is zero. So b equals zero. That's always nice, we can get rid of this whole term now. Now the technical solution includes both of these, but at time zero we need this condition. And in this particular case, there's now no cosine. So from that, we concluded that our solution is now a sine of 2t. Now we have y prime at 0 is 1. So we take y prime. At time t equals 0 is equal to 1. If we plug in that here, we end up with 2a times cosine of 0, which is 1, is equal to 1. So a equals one half. So our final solution with the initial value considered equals one half, which is our a value times sine of two times t, and then plus zero cosine. So this is our specific solution given those initial conditions. Um, same method, same concept, um, but you might have been able to recognize that this is in the form omega squared. Um, now, if we had a minus 4y, we'd bring the 4y over and we would say, what second derivative is a constant multiple of itself? Here it would be negative, but if it were minus 4y, when we bring it over, it's y double prime equals plus 4y. And in that case, we recognize that as an exponential. When we solve this um, characteristic equation here, we would get r minus 2 and r plus 2, and that would give us real solutions which produce the complex exponential term. There's no imaginary, so these right here, cosine and sine, go away. Um, so that's one way to identify it. Or if you need, want to go through the official math, then you can use the e to the a, t, sine, and cosine. Um, so that's number 27. Let's look at number 28. Similar idea. I'm going to put all these similar ones on one video, I think. Who knows? Maybe by the end I lied to you. Um, 28. Same concept. So at this point, these become pretty straightforward because um, there's not much that could be thrown at you in this way. Toughest part is probably the initial conditions. Um, I'll write these first. So we have um, y of 0 is 1, and the initial derivative is 0. So usually if we expect a sine or cosine solution, or even exponential, having a 0 for your initial value makes it really easy. Okay, so a characteristic equation, exact same thing. Our coefficient is 1 and then 4, and 5. And so we might um, hope to factor this on our own, but unfortunately we would have two negative terms if we tried. Um, so factoring is not going to work there. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And thank you, Scott, another nice answer. He loves us. Um, so if we bring in this 4, um, we're going to have a negative 4 in here. Bring this in squared is going to produce a 1. Um, so plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is i. Go through the uh, formal math there if you want to see that. So we have a equals negative 2, b equals 1. 
coefficient in front of i is just a real number one. So um, we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to say that y of t is simply equal to a e to the, and now a, this a is different than this a. Maybe the c1 was better than c2. And now sine of 1t plus b, same exponential, and now cosine of t. So um, let's look at our initial condition here. y of 0 is 1. So if we plug in 0 for t, the sine makes this whole term go away. And in here, e to the 0 is just 1. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we end up with b times 1, this term goes away, equals y naught. And y naught is 1. So that's pretty straightforward. Now um, that we have b equals 1, try to keep all this here. So we'll keep that, and I'll rewrite this. Now let's look, eh, do this too. Um, so now let's look at our other condition. Um, we have, and I'll plug it in as you go. Um, so now y of t, same thing. And sometimes it helps to get rid of all your a's and b's as soon as you know them. So we'll do that now. b right here is 1. Okay. So our next initial condition, the derivative at 0 is 0. So we know from the nature of cosines and sines that there's a good chance that's going to eliminate one of our constants, or at least uh, make it cleaner. Um, so we're going to take the derivative of this. I'm going to use some of the uh, chain rule. Now I see an opportunity to simplify our chain rule math. And so when I look at this, I say, well, this term is common among both, so there's no need in doing, excuse me, product rule, not chain rule, um, product rule here with the same term as here. So we're going to factor that out. If we leave the e to the minus 2t out, then we're left with a sine of t plus cosine t. And that's easier to do the um, product rule on, because now it's only one time. So we'll take the derivative of this, uh, minus 2, e to the minus 2t. And now um, multiply by the initial one here. And now plus the same one, um, unchanged here. And then times the derivative of what's inside here. So we get a cosine t, no chain rule, because that's just t, minus, I believe, yeah, sine t. Okay, so that's our derivative right here. Now we can see that if we plug in 0 um, for our derivative, all of the sine terms are going to vanish. So that really cleans it up. Get rid of this, and get rid of this. If we plug in 0 here, the exponentials become 1, not 0, but 1. They go away. So we're left with minus 2 cosine of 0, which is just 1 minus 2, and now plus, I'll write this here, that is visible, good, uh, minus 2, um, plus 1 times a equals 0. That's what we're left with from that equation. Um, let me just make sure, yep, that's correct. So obviously a equals 2. So we've solved for the other one using the derivative expression. That is just in the screen. Um, great, so uh, we've solved for both of those constants given the initial value problem. And let's plug those in. Color change. Um, so y of t is equal to, and remember we concluded earlier that b equals 1, and a is equal to 2. So factoring this out, we can write it in this way. So a is 2 and b equals 1. Um, just remember that this e goes to both. I'm just writing it in the uh, condensed form. So that's our uh, particular solution for this um, initial value problem. Same method. We're doing the exact same thing. Um, and in fact, let's look at one more of these. Because number 29 is the same way it looks like. So real quick, 29. Um, we have the same thing, same same method. So think of your quadratic equation, the discriminant 
which discriminates real from imaginary solutions, b squared minus 4ac. That's how you can immediately test if this is going to be real or imaginary. So b squared is 4 um, minus 4ac minus 40 is imaginary. Um, or I should say negative, and then we take the root of that. So because the discriminant is negative, we're going to have imaginary solutions, so we won't try to factor this. Um, and so forming our characteristic equation, same method, <laughs> but change the variable. And so r equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And so this is equal to, I'll leave room, 1 plus or minus square root, bringing this into the radical, we have to square it, which means we're going to divide what's in here by 4. This is negative 36 over 4. And so that is 1 plus or minus 3i. Don't forget to take the square root, it's not 9i. Um, great, so we have a and b again, and we're going to have no initial value problem. So we just plug it into the formula without thinking. Um, so a goes up here, not negative a, but positive a, so that's just t sine of 3t. And then same thing here, new constant e to the same thing, t. And see, you do enough calculus, you get to spell words. It's a great time, sine of 3t. Um, that's our solution here, nothing different. So um, I think we can look at... Hmm. One last one, um, because then we introduce the other form of solutions. So we'll look at one more, since we can. Let's look at what this one is. This is now number 30. All right, yeah, one more of this nature. So we have 4y prime plus 17, that should be double prime, plus 17y prime plus 4y equals 0. So remember in our quadratic form, to solve um, b squared minus 4ac, um, we don't technically have to have um, this be 1, but it's always nicer. So we can choose to do this one of two ways. Um, we can divide by 4 to get rid of this, or um, we could plug it into the quadratic formula as it is. I'm just going to show the nice clean solution by dividing, or cleaner, um, by dividing that over. So now we see that a equals c equals 1, and b is 17 fourths. So, time for fractions. Fourths um, plus or minus square root of b squared. So this numerator is 289, 17 squared, um, over 4 squared, b squared minus 4ac. So that is 4 times 1 times 1 minus 4. Now I'm going to immediately put that into the correct fraction. Well, I'm going to try. Uh, so that's 64 or 16th. That's 4. 4 times a times c. Um, and I just found a common denominator all over 2a. So this is now um, negative 17 uh, eighths, distributing that to plus or minus the square root. 289 minus 64 is 225. What do you know? Another perfect square. Um, so 225 over 16, and then we still have that over 2. Um, so this um, right here simplifies square root of 225 is 15 over 4, and then dividing by 2 we get 15 eighths. 15 over 4 over 2 is 15 eighths. So this is actually really nice because this is now um, if we subtract the 15 and eighths, we get minus 32 eighths, which is negative 4. If we add it, it's minus 2 eighths, which is minus 1 quarter. What do you know? More beautiful math. And we just plug it right in. Um, in this case, we have no imaginary solution, so you could view it as the sine and cosine actually go away when you plug in 0. The sine vanishes to 0, the cosine becomes 1. So there's no term there. Or you can say it's real, so we just plug it right into the exponential. So without any initial value, y of t equals a e to the minus 1 fourth t. This value is our first one, plus b e, and now the second one, to the minus 4 t. Um, so we plug each one of those in, um, 
as the frequency or as the coefficient in front of time in the exponential. And then we're left with our solution. No initial values, so that's all we have to do. So a lot of these equations boiled down to um, simply finding the roots of the um, indicia or the uh, characteristic equation that we get from there. All right, so I'm going to split up to a new video since we have a slightly different concept.